Hey everyone, I'm Scott, and today I want to talk to you about Christmas, specifically the first Christmas, the birth of Jesus. Now, whenever you think about the first Christmas, you probably think of something like this, right? This is a very classic nativity scene, um, uh, my little people nativity scene that I had to take for my kids for this video. And there you see baby Jesus, and you see Mary and Joseph, and there's the angel on top, and I have wise men. They didn't really fit here, but I do have a couple of wise men right here. Um, and normally when we think of the nativity scene, this is what we think of. We think of Mary and Joseph entering Bethlehem, Mary riding riding on a donkey, them looking around for a place to stay because Mary's nine months pregnant and she's about to pop any second, and they go to the Motel 6, and they go to Holiday Inn in Bethlehem, and all those places say, sorry, there's no room at the inn, and so they end up in a little stable where angels sing to them, and Jesus is born, and sometime later that night or the next day, some wise men come with their gifts. Well, this is the typical story of the nativity, but just about everything about this little setup is wrong. And let me explain why. When did Mary and Joseph get to Bethlehem? The typical story of the first Christmas is that Mary rides into Bethlehem on a donkey. Now, the Bible never says that she was riding a donkey. She might have walked, she might have ridden in some kind of cart, or maybe she took an Uber to get to Bethlehem. We have no idea. The Bible doesn't say. But maybe more interestingly, the Bible also doesn't say that Mary gives birth to Jesus the first night that she's in Bethlehem. In fact, when we read the Bible, this is all it says about how long they were in the town. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. That's all the Bible says. So maybe they're in Bethlehem for a week or a month. We have really no idea, but it doesn't sound like she gives birth to Jesus her first night in town. Well, let's look at another question. Was Jesus born in a stable? For centuries, as people have told the Christmas story, they've picked on the innkeeper. And they've said, how come that innkeeper wouldn't let Mary stay in a room, stay in a hallway, somewhere to give birth to baby Jesus? Why did they shoo Mary and Joseph away? But what's really interesting is nowhere in the Bible do we read about an innkeeper. And that's because I don't think there was an innkeeper. And it's because I don't think there was actually an inn. You see, in Luke chapter 2, verse 7, we read that Jesus was born in a manger like this one, and uh, he was born in a manger because there was no room for them at the inn. But the word inn is kind of a tricky word. It's a Greek word, and the word is kataluma. You can go ahead and say that right now, kataluma. Go ahead, say it. Okay, good. Kataluma. Now, the word kataluma is only found one other time in the New Testament in Mark chapter 14, verse 14. And it's when Jesus is talking about making preparations for the Passover, the last supper that he'd have with his disciples. And he talks about going to get a kataluma, which is a guest room, a private room where his disciples can have the last supper. And so I think what Luke is talking about in Luke chapter 2, verse 7 is not an inn. It's not a hotel. Because when Luke does talk about such things, he uses a completely different word. In fact, the word that Luke uses, kataluma, should probably be translated guest room. That Jesus was placed in a manger because there was no room for him in the guest room. Now, what would that mean? What it would mean is that Mary and Joseph were staying with family members, which makes a lot of sense because in 2,000 years ago in the Jewish culture, if you traveled all the way to Bethlehem and you had tons of relatives there, there's no way that they would let you stay in a hotel. They would invite you into their house. But the way that social customs were 2,000 years ago, the elders got the prime real estate in the house. They are the ones that got the guest house. And so Mary is nine months pregnant, and you might think that she deserves some sort of priority because of that, but they evidently they kicked Mary to the ground floor. And in the ground ground floor is where they would bring animals in at night, in the ground floor of the home. When it was cold outside or to feed them or to take care of them, they would bring animals inside. And so you'd find things in, on the ground floor like a, a manger or a trough. And that explains that Mary and Joseph were actually living in a house. They weren't in a barn. They weren't in a cave. They weren't in a stable. Mary and Joseph, I think, were in a house. They just weren't in the nicest room. And they were in a room that was used for all kinds of different things, including taking care of animals, and that's why the Jesus was placed in a manger. What about the three wise men? Now, a few other things about the Jesus story. It says in the song, you know, that Jesus, no crying he makes. That's probably not true because Jesus was a pretty typical little kid, pretty typical little baby, and I'm sure he cried. We also talk about or we sing about the fact that angels sing, and my angel 
kind of sings like this. Uh, but the reality is, is that the Bible never says that angels sing. Uh, the Bible says the angels speak. And in fact, that's what happens in Luke chapter two. The angels go to the shepherds and they start, uh, they speak to the shepherds and they praise God, but they never sing like this angel is trying to do, I guess. Okay, let's talk about the three kings, or as they should be more accurately called, three wise men. The idea that three kings came to visit Jesus is probably not accurate. They were probably wise men. They were probably wealthy guys from Persia who came to see the baby Jesus. Now, I only have two wise men right here, and that's okay, because the Bible never tells us how many wise men there were. The Bible only says that there were three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And so it's okay that I only have two wise men. It's probably because at some point, one of my children ate one of the wise men. Uh, but the point is that they they just showed up and we don't know how many there were. There could have been three, there could have been 33. The number three is based on how many gifts. But again, the Bible doesn't say exactly how many there were. Now, did the wise men show up on that first Christmas day with baby Jesus sitting there in the manger? No, most likely the wise men didn't show up for like two years after the birth of Jesus. And we know that if you read the story of the wise men in the book of Matthew, and you read about the fact that they saw a star, and then they traveled across the desert, and they went on this long journey, and then they go to Herod, and they refer to Jesus as a child, and all these things point to the fact that Jesus was probably a couple years old when they saw him. And so that means that even the story of the wise men isn't probably what we've originally thought. When was Jesus born? Now, it's possible that Jesus was born on December 25th, but it's probably really unlikely. And that's because it's really cold in Israel in, on December 25th. And we know that the shepherds were out in their fields watching their flock at night, which is something they wouldn't do if it was really cold. And so it was probably springtime. It might have been early fall, but most likely it wasn't December 25th. The date December 25th happens to have been a pagan holiday during the early Christian era. It was a pagan holiday, and at some point the church decided to celebrate the birth of Jesus on this pagan holiday where everyone already got the day off and they already were having a party, and they said, well, hey, let's just celebrate Jesus on that day, and that's why we have Christmas on December 25th. Now, here's the thing. Maybe there was a lot about the Christmas story that you thought was true that really isn't probably very accurate. But none of that changes the basic message that Jesus, the Son of God, God himself, came to earth to be with us. God is with us, Emmanuel. And that's what we celebrate in Christmas. And so the biggest truth of the Christmas season is not the details of how Mary and Joseph got to, got to Bethlehem or whether Jesus was born in a stable or whether he was born in a house. The main issue is the fact that Jesus, the Savior of the world, came to die for our sins. And that is worth singing about. Thanks so much for checking out this video. If you're interested in other holidays, I happen to have some videos on Easter and Lent and Halloween, and I plan on putting together a couple more Christmas videos pretty soon. Um, if you have any questions, you can put those in the notes below. You can put comments in the notes below. I'll have some notes in the description of where you can find the Bible verses about the Christmas season, and maybe even I'll try and find some articles that talk about some of these other interpretations of the Christmas story. I'm not sure why I'm still holding the wise men. I just really like these guys, and that's why I'm holding them. Um, but also, if you're new to our channel, thanks so much for checking it out, and please subscribe to our channel. Merry Christmas!